Welcome to another episode of the Impossible Life Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nick Surface, and I'm looking across at a man who only hates three things. Sin, weakness, and glitter. That's right, friends. The former WCU. <laughs> Garrett Unklebach, a man who doesn't let evil of any kind cling to him. Hey, hate what God hates, right? Does God hate glitter? Is that is that a scripture that I've not perused? You know, I can't say that that's in scripture, but it's certainly something that Garrett hates. I might, I might have... <laughs> Might be going outside the bounds there. Your sister, and I'm not going to say it on the air, but your sister shared the holiday term that you gave for glitter, and I thought it was very amusing uh, recently. I'd never glitter is not a good thing. No, it's not. It and does you, not. No one is blessed by the presence of glitter. I know, and I've hated glitter for a long time, and my girls know it, and so they always show off to me whenever they have glitter. Like, they know they're just kind of, you know. I don't like it because there's glitter from last Christmas on my couch. That's why I don't like glitter. Still? I'm sure if you looked. Wow. I'm, okay. Anyways, yeah, go hard left it, there. It just, you know, it lingers too long. It's an I uninvited agree. guest. I agree, man. It's awful. And for what? So it can reflect a little bit of light? Who cares? You know? Anyways. All right. Today, we are going with Breaking Limits, continuing on. So we had uh, Identity, which we started with first, because that's the that's the limit that a lot of people bump into that they're not even aware. Then we had Purpose, because that's one that people frust- like frustratingly wrestle with. And today, I'm very excited, because we're covering Mindset. And that is like one of the biggest limitations. I, you know, it's funny. I was watching the Navy SEALs. I follow Navy SEAL handles on Instagram now because of Garrett. And I love that they said every every um, every limit in, is in your mind except for death. <laughs> it's like something like that. And it just showed these guys in buds yeah, just getting beat good. down. And that's I was fair, like, that's a fair point. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, that's a different that's a different viewpoint than most people have. But really, this this limit of mindset, and that we did it in order for a reason. And so much of this podcast is about mindset. We're going to specifically deal with the poverty mindset, which unfortunately is something that I have a lot of experience with and something that I, I it's funny because it's something I've battled a lot. I, I would say that I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent victory because it definitely will try and creep back in, but I would say it's like a high nineties victory. And so because of that, I will look around and see, a, I'll recognize it in other people. And it, I think it's so much more common than and what that, people that's think. That's really the best you can do is be aware of it and right. know what to do when it rises up. Yeah. Because again, limiting belief is a thought that terminates potential. Yeah. And so the, there's thoughts that terminate your potential related to identity. There's thoughts that terminate your potential related to purpose. Mm-hmm. And then some of the biggest thoughts that terminate your potential, you experienced this and got on the other side of it, is, is a poverty mindset, which is really what you believe about money, what you believe about resources. Yeah. And, and so much about yeah, what you believe is possible. Uh, it's uh, we're going to get into a little bit more of this, but it's funny because I always, you know, we always like to define things. And I ask Garrett, like, what's your definition of poverty and like poverty mindset? I like Garrett has looked into the sky and given me some pretty like in depth one liners. <laughs> and you sat there and you kind of looked off, and I was like, okay, here we go. And I was at the board waiting to write the notes, and he just goes stuck, just real simple one word. I'm like, that's it. It's like stuck. That that's a poverty mindset. You were just stuck. Where you're because at. Because the opposite of a poverty mindset is that you can grow, that yeah. you can do something with it. Um, Robert Kiyosaki talked about that. He said, you could take away all of my wealth yeah. and I could build it back again, right? Because he, I mean, he's, uh, his book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is really a foundational thought process for a lot of people in overcoming a poverty mindset. Mm-hmm. He grew up with a father that had a poverty mindset. And he learned from somebody who had the ability to expand, the ability to grow. And so if you have a poverty mindset, you're just in a place that you're not going to get out of until you learn how to think differently. Yeah, big time. Now, here's the thing. As, as with a lot of these things, so much of what we're saying, and this is what we're going to get into, poverty mindset, they're not things that people go like, oh, that's a poverty mindset. I think a lot of what, what makes it so difficult is that it's just, it's just they're considered their normal thinking. Right. And they don't realize, no, actually, that's a poverty mindset. We're going to get more into that. So we're going to literally go through, highlight some of the most common uh, limiting like thoughts that terminate your potential in relation to a poverty mindset. We're also going to give you some of the musts to replace them and really put yourself in the, on the right foundation and grow. Uh, and we're going to we're going to get into a, a number it's of not just here. replace. I mean, it's not just stop the wrong thoughts. You got to replace them with the right thoughts. That's exactly right. OK, G. Well, let's uh, since we're talking about poverty, I, I looked this up because uh, it's one of the fun things about the, this podcast. I get to learn all sorts, which is my number one strength. I love learning. So what do you think the poverty guideline in the United States for a single person was in 2024? What puts in you below 2024? What puts you below line, the poverty line? Mm, I'm going to guess 29,000. Well, gee, you live a good life. It's $15,000 and 60, $15,060 for two people. It's 20,440. And it actually for a family, I was of, thinking household, right? Okay. Well, for a family of three, it's 25, 820. 
And for four, it's uh, 31,200. 31, so if you were thinking like a family of four, you were probably right around the right one. Now, here's a, here's, a, here's a perspective shift for everybody that's listening to this in America. What's the global extreme poverty line per day? Global poverty line? I think it's like $2 a day. I'm always amazed by your knowledge. Yeah, 215. 215 is the wor- is defined by the World Bank. And unfortunately, 712 people globally were living in extreme poverty uh, as, as of 2022. So it's just, I mean, like that that is a perspective shift. Less than $1,000 a year. Yeah, I mean... I don't know that anybody that's listening to this, although we actually, there might be, unfortunately, because there's people, we, there's a lot of people in other countries. But I, for you that's listening to this in America, what, I hope that gives you a little bit of a perspective to kind of stop and be like, hey, you know what? I actually have a lot Doing more to be pretty gr- good. Yeah, I have a lot more to be grateful for than I, than I uh, perhaps realize. Real, real poverty is I don't have any food. Mm-hmm. Nobody I know has any food. I don't know where to go to get any food. Yeah. That's real poverty. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I've never experienced a, that. A, a very, very different reality than we live in. Yeah. So, so much of so much of what people will struggle with in the poverty mindset is definitely kind of we're going to look at this from a Western world uh, American uh, perspective. But like right now, the economy in America is you know it's interesting. We'll just put it that way. There's data not that, its best. It's not its best. But <laughs> but the data will tell you otherwise. The data will sure. say like oh we're growing and. We had this many jobs. Oh, you can say whatever you want to say, you know, macro numbers, influencing factors. Just talk to people. Yeah, and that's that's been my big – because I, obviously I work with a lot of different companies and talk to a lot of different people in what I do. Talk to a bunch of average Americans yep. and ask them how it's going. Yeah, and for a few quarters I've been going, hmm, what they're saying and what I'm seeing is way, way, way different. D- depending on where you're at, maybe you're someone with a really stable income. Well, inflation's happened. Yes. Your income probably hasn't changed. Your costs have gone up. You 100%. have less money. Or people who have the ability to affect their income, business owners, they have found that there are people with less money yeah. and it's harder to sell your products. So, yeah, and you shared an interesting perspective because you're not immune to this yourself. I mean, no, I've, I mean, I have multiple businesses and my, you know, at the beginning of this year in my construction business, uh, we were coming out of a, a year that was already tough in 2023, coming into a year where people are just slow to start projects. It's a for construction, which is very, you know, real uh, similar to the real estate market where interest rates have a big impact on how much product moves. When interest rates are high, people don't want to get loans. People mm-hmm. don't want to get loans. They don't want to build stuff. When people don't want to build stuff, it's not a great time for construction, right? And so what does that mean? It means there's less construction uh, in this year than there might be in a year where interest rates are great. What am I going to do about it? Just quit? Right. Right. But no, it means there's it means there's still opportunity. There may be less opportunity in this year than there might be in another year, but you got to do the most with what you have. There's years that it rains more. Right. right? And, and some of my other businesses, I've felt it right. Lost clients in some area, gained clients in other areas, right, where I've lost for one type of season, I've gained in a, in a different area. But even in a year where it doesn't rain as much as it, you know, if like your area gets 100 inches of rainfall every or 100 days of rainfall every year. And this year it only rained 75 days. Are you just going to quit? Right. No, you got to make the most with what you have. Yeah. And, and but, but the, so there's a difference there though, because one of the hallmarks of poverty, of a poverty mindset is that you're focused on the lack, right? You see threats, you're very problem conscious and you're, and it's really poverty negative. mindset. People would say like, oh man, it's a tough year. Yeah. I just can't do anything. Right. And, right? and the only way that you can win is when the wind is at your back. Yeah. That's exactly right. And we're going to get more into that because you see this play out all the time. I remember being in like uh, in in sales jobs years and years ago, actually in 2008, whenever it was, you know, we were having a global uh, recession. And I remember like the story that was going around, it was basically the end of the world. Right. And so the, the logical thought process there, because you're focused on negative lack and problems, is like, well, why even try? Because I'm, I'm up against like this unstoppable force. And it's a completely different focus, like just from a very basic thing. You are looking at what you lack. And that's that's to me is the beginning of the hall the hallmark of a, a poverty mindset. So the question is like, where does this come from? And we're gonna get more into this, but we're there's there's it's one thing to say where did it come from for you. It's a whole other thing to say where does it come from in general. And as always, we're gonna go to scripture. So we're gonna read from uh, Jeremiah seventeen five through eight, which this is one of my life scriptures. And it says, "Thus says the Lord: Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord." He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. 
He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green, and it's not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. Not afraid of the heat. Mm -hmm. Not anxious yes. in the middle of the drought. Yes. Right? And so what, that's the opposite of a poverty mindset. You're yeah. saying, you know what? For, for, for one, and this is like bigger than poverty mindset. This is just mindset in general. I was just talking with one of my friends about how he's very close. To, uh, a friend of mine is very close to the White House um, speaks with Donald Trump, speaks with a lot of very high powered people. And he was telling me like, man, this it's, it's dangerous right now. Mm. It's scary. Right. And I said, you know what? I, I see all of that. I agree with you, but God, right. Right. What I know is that God has a plan for me. God has a mm. plan for this country. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be a nice plan, but I know that God has a plan. And just like Ephesians three says his plan is better than my plan. Yeah. And so I'm going to lean into God's plan in the same way right? When there's drought, the same way when it's hot outside, this may not be ideal conditions. Does I, if it's non-ideal, does that mean you just give up and quit? Some people, if it's non-ideal, they have already predefined yeah. non-ideal as terrible. Yeah. Very right. good. Right. But because I trust in God, my, my trust is not in myself. When conditions are non-ideal, I say, well, this is an opportunity. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to learn a lesson. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to just get tougher. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to be grateful for the things that I have. Maybe I'm going to find a way to do more this year than I did last year. Yeah. But what I'm not going to do is focus on the things that I don't have. What I'm not going to do is focus on, on how bad it could be. Yeah, because if you're threat conscious, the, the, you know what the amazing thing is about that, G? We know it's not going to last forever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and everyone knows that. But when you're in the moment, all you're thinking about is the threat and the pain and, and the, the problems. If you get stronger through this, what do you think you're going to be like whenever it does eventually subside and get easier? Oh, man. Like, you know, I'm the guy that's been struggling to bench press 200 pounds. Oh, we're going to take 50 pounds off of it? Watch me rep it. Yeah. Because I've been trying. You know what I mean? Well, it, it's the same on um, on the 100-mile race, which we both experienced, right? At at mile 65, you're thinking, man, how could I keep going? How could yeah. I run another 35 miles? But what you realize is when you run, like, how you feel at mile 65 isn't going to be how you feel at mile 70. Yeah. You could feel worse at mile 70. You could also feel different at mile 70. And you don't have to have enough strength, energy, courage to run the rest of the way. You just got to have enough strength, energy, courage, belief in God to run another lap, yeah. to keep going the next mile. And eventually you get to a place where you feel better. Yeah. Right. At mile 65, you're thinking it's only going to get worse from here. That part is a lie. Yeah. 35 miles is Very 35 true. miles. Yep. But there's there's points in those last 35 miles where you feel differently yep. about the rest of the race. Big time. Yeah. And that and that's what's so so at the very source of it. That's why I love this scripture and I love this series because the the real shift mindset shift that we hope you are getting from this series. If you're experiencing limitation in your life, it's because you're looking at the wrong source. Your source is you, it's your logic, it's it's your way of doing things. If you remember, we've done this in order, identity, the very thing that will lead you to being so insecure and to lacking knowing who you are so that you're tying yourself to your accomplishments was if you're building yourself on human logic rather than say what the word of God and what God says about you. It's the same thing here. If your source is in yourself, you will have a poverty mindset. And mind you, you could even be very wealthy monetarily and still have that poverty mindset. And we're going to give you an example. Of that. Look at it this way, right? Scarcity which is less resources than ideal. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's just a simple definition for yeah. scarcity. Less resources than ideal. Scarcity can be a fact. Yeah. Right? Inflation, uh, banking, market rates in this country, scarcity is a fact. Mm -hmm. But poverty is a mindset mm -hmm. of how you deal with that situation. What if you just say, you know, 2024 is 90% as good, and this is just, you know, making an example, a generalization, 2024 is 90% as good as 2023 a poverty mindset is focusing on the 10 percent that you don't have and saying that means that i can't succeed that i'm, I'm not going to have enough yeah right but a growth mindset is looking at the 90 percent and say how do i squeeze 100 percent out of 90 yeah right how do i well, what can i do with what has been given to me yeah that's and, so good which lines right up with uh the parable of the sower in matthew 25 right uh, quick paraphrase, you know, Jesus. Can, can I actually read with the pair with the one oh, time? Man? Yeah. So if, if, well, you're going to say a quick paraphrase. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. Par I'll paraphrase and yeah. then you can read it. Right. Quick paraphrase. Um, this is Jesus telling a, a parable. And at the beginning of not every parable, but the, because Jesus tells some parables back to back, but at the beginning of every time Jesus tells parables, he says, and the kingdom of heaven is like this. Mm -hmm. Right. So hear this parable. Jesus said, and the kingdom of heaven is like this. A master, and in this parable, the master is God. 
a master goes away on a long journey and leaves with each of his servants some resources, some gold. To one, one talent. To one, is it? It's two or three. It's the, yeah, one, 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 two, one, five. Yeah, one, mm-hmm. one to to another two to another five, and leaves resources to them, and then comes back. The master finally comes back after a long time and calls the servants in, the stewards in, and says, "Come and give me an account of what you've done with what I've given you." Now read what yeah. the, the one talent servant says. So the five and the two double the money, right? And they give it back to him. And he says, "Well done, good and faithful. You know, enter into the joy of your master." The one talent guy. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. And, but Jesus answered, his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. Right? And so it was... That mindset so is po- on a poverty mindset. Yeah, is for so one, it's there's fear yep. in it, big time. Uh, but then two, again, understand the master in this parable is God. Yeah, and the servant is saying to the master, "I knew you to be a hard man, right?" Mean in this in this context, mean like the servant has a job to do, and what happens to the servants that didn't do their job? They got punished. Yeah, right. This servant's job was to make a return on what was given to him. And he was so afraid of losing it, like, man, like, if I lose it, if I screw this up, um, you know, it's going to be bad for me. So I don't want this responsibility. I just want you to give everything to me. Right. Just let me live in your house for free, yeah. essentially, right? I don't want to have to be responsible for doing my job. So here, just take it back. He says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. And this is, that's not the, that's not the truth of who the master is. Right. This is this servant's Mm, perspective of the master. Yeah. He's saying he's a hard man because he requires you to do your job. Yeah. And and that's one of the big takeaways. Like Garrett said, scarcity can be a fact. I mean, in this parable, this guy had one and everybody else had at least double what he had. And in some cases, five times. Right. So you could say factually he's worse off, but it was his thinking that absolutely undid him. That's what we're hoping you guys take away. The poverty mindset, and the reason we said this is one of the a, a huge limitation people need to overcome is because your mindset, if it's in poverty, is a lens that you put on and you will see so many things. And we're going to actually go and into some examples. The, the master says, like, you, basically he's saying, you should have done what all the other guys did, but at least you should have done something. Right. And you did nothing. You just hit it. And so a poverty mindset, again, you're stuck. A poverty mindset is like, well, there's nothing I can do with my situation, so I'll just give up. Right. right. I'm just stuck here. Yeah. Whereas you have an alternative philosophy, G. You obviously have some big dreams. I know some of the very specific. You shared a lot of them on this podcast for those who have been listening. But you're also very big on having low needs. So, like, how does low needs and big dreams? Because they seem like they're the exact opposite. Yeah. So, the spectrum. where when you have a poverty mindset, when you're focusing on the lack, yeah, right. There's high expectation, right? High. Right. Like I, I expect to get like. 100% opportunity, things need to always be good for me, right. or there's no way that I can succeed. Versus where you really need to be is like to have a growth mindset is, hey, I don't need much. My need, my personal needs are low. Mm-hmm. I can do a lot with a little, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can, right? I have a low needs perspective on pretty much everything in my life. Uh, I, I want to be someone who doesn't really need much, right? Like you, I can sleep in the dirt. I can eat, you know, tuna out of a can, my personal needs are very low. However, I'm going to reach to do as much as I can, which that puts me in a place also where uh, because I don't have really high needs, I'm not afraid of a lot either, Mm. right? I can do a lot with just really simple things and then I'm going to work as hard as I can instead of saying like, man, if I don't get, if if I'm not treated exactly the way I want to be treated, if I don't get every opportunity I think that I'm entitled to, I'm just going to turn and walk away. I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to say it's not fair for me. I'm going to be a victim of my circumstance. Yeah, that's so good. And and so the thing, I, I talked earlier about how the source of the poverty mindset is ultimately having to trust in yourself. But for a lot of people, it, like it should be noted if poverty is a mindset right and it's a lens that you put on you learned it so the question i would ask if you're out there and and really i hope you take some time because i remember the first person that ever asked me this was pastor keith he said where do you learn to think the way you do about money and the reason i'm bringing up money is because that's where most people's poverty mindset will show will show up but we're going to give you some sp- very specific examples here and go through hopefully as like a light bulb I, moment. i want to just answer that question for yeah, myself please. like where i learned to think about money is before like my parents ever taught me anything about money, I've talked about this before, the thing my parents always said to me is God has a plan for your life, 
right? And if God has a plan for your life and God's plans are good, right? Doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, right? I have, gra- I have great plans for my children. That doesn't mean their life's always going to be easy, right. but I know it's going to be good. I right. know it's going to be a great plan of what happens to them. And so I know if God has a good plan for my life and I love him and trust him, if I go through tough seasons, that means that he's still looking out for me. Right. Even when I don't have what I want, my needs are low, yeah. right? But even when I don't get what I want, if you look at God as like your genie, and he's not giving me what I want, you're not going to like God. Right. Right. But when you look at God as your father and like, okay, God, God's going to look out for me, but his number one goal is not to make sure that I'm comfortable. Then you'll start to see a different way that God is working in you, a different way that God's training you and preparing you for a future. Yeah. And that's what a plan mm-hmm. is. A plan is a process with a great end. Yeah. Right. And so God has, a, God's putting me through a process. There's a great end at, the, at, at, at the end of my process. And so if I'm in process, that means sometimes process is going to hurt. Learned a lot about process in the military, yeah. a lot about training in the military. And a lot of that training was very unfun, but there was greatness at the end of it. Mm. And so that's, that actually leads perfectly into one of the, the very first things. So we're going to go through some of the beliefs, the thoughts and the outworkings, like how these poverty mindsets show up. Because like I said, as we said last week with our, our limitations on purpose, a lot of people don't see the limitations on purpose, mm-hmm. and, and what was robbing them was good thoughts about purpose that weren't actually the best thoughts. In this case, I think there's there's poverty mindset that hides in all sorts of different corners of thought, and we don't realize it. And I think the number one way that you see this is transactional, and you touched on it right there without actually saying it exactly this way, but like a transactional mindset will always be thinking like, oh, what's this going to cost me? And doesn't actually understand the value of what they'll of what's going to happen because because like if I was looking at what you said it's like oh, dude I don't really want to be a Navy SEAL that bad I got to be in the water for how long I'm not going to be able to feel my I might get what kind of disease I might ha- how much am I going to have to chafe up uh, right because you don't actually know what the value is and so you'll you'll start quitting on things and you'll have this expectation of like uh, you know this really shouldn't be this hard if you've ever said like why this shouldn't be this hard in something. There's a great Jim Rohn quote. It says, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Yeah. That's the difference between a growth mindset and, and having that like that poverty mindset. That poverty is like, oh, this shouldn't be that hard. No. Like you, if you were better, it wouldn't be. And and again, that's uh, going back to what Robert Kiyosaki said in the beginning. He said, if you took me back, like broke is a really t- difficult place to be. Yeah. But he said, if you because of what I've learned, if you made me broke again, I'd get out of it very quickly. Yeah. And so like one of the um, antidotes to a poverty mindset is understanding I can get better than I currently yeah. am. Yes. And so I my situation might not change, but I can change. Yes. Right. And if I can change, I can change my situation. Yeah. And, and honestly, if I could, I wish I could. One of the greatest things that I've learned from you, and I say this to people all the time, is this there's this shift in mindset when you go from like, oh man, this is really rough, to I'm here, so I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make it better. And that sounds really simple, and everybody goes like, yeah, but I'm telling you, it, it, it's so many times when, when you sit there like, oh, the government, oh man, my wife did this, oh, my kids, did. you're there. And I, and I did this to you guys this past weekend at, at Mighty Men, right. which is like, a, a I learned this from from many other great speakers like John Maxwell, where yeah. I told you guys to, I yeah. said, raise your hand, right? They're all sitting in the audience, said, raise your hand. Okay, now raise it higher. Right. Right, and, got, and so now you're like kind of like reach your shoulder up by your ear and raise your hand a little bit higher. Okay, now reach it higher. And some guys will stand up. And then I keep saying that over and over again. And after five or six times, guys are standing in their chair. Guys are trying to climb on their friend's shoulders. And that's really just realizing, like, I can actually, when I said raise your hand, why didn't you raise it as high as you possibly could? Right. Uh, there's more in you yes. than what you're currently doing. And so sometimes, like, the situation that you're in is an incubator to help you get the most out of yourself. Yeah. And so when you'll be grateful for those tough seasons, gratitude resets everything. When you'll be grateful for those tough seasons, realize, like, you know what? This is a, this is a tough economy this year. Maybe there's more in me. Maybe I can yeah. raise my hand a little bit higher. Maybe I can stand up a little bit taller. Maybe I'm smarter than I thought I was. Maybe I know more people than I think mm-hmm. I do. Maybe there's more opportunities than I realize. And if you'll just dig within yourself and push a little bit more, God is the God of miracles. God can do more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Yes. But what I, I want to ask God to do more than I can think or imagine when I've done all that I'm responsible for. Right. Right. I don't want to be the one talent servant who's like, well, it was tough out here. So can you just do it? Yeah. Right. I want to say, God, I've done all I can do. Yeah. And I'm trusting in you to do the rest because I know what I can do isn't enough, but I've done my part. I've been faithful. I'm trusting in you. 
I've tried to be as good of a steward as I can, and I can't do enough. I need you to help me. Yeah, I love that, G. We, we, we've had, a, I think we had a, we, we've covered this before on podcasts about when we're praying for things that are actually our responsibility. Like, Lord, just make me disciplined. And he's like. Because re- remember what this is. It's a limiting belief. Yes. Right? And limiting beliefs are thoughts that terminate potential. There is potential growth within you. When you'll get rid of a poverty mindset, why do I not want you to have a poverty mindset? Why does God not want you to have a poverty mindset? Because what God wants most for you is not for you to be rich. Riches come, wealth comes from you growing. What God wants most for you is maturity. Mm -hmm. And a a poverty mindset will keep you from maturity. You saying, well, focusing on the lack, I don't have enough, I'm not capable. That is, Those are not thoughts that grow you and mature you. If you just want a litmus test for what are good thoughts for my life, what are thoughts that lead to your maturity? What are thoughts that lead to your growth? Those are good thoughts. Yeah, that's so good, G. And, and you, I mean, you touched on it once again. I mean, if you're if you're a poverty mindset, you believe heavily in limits, and you fail to recognize patterns. You and, obviously don't listen to the impossible life. Yeah, clearly not. No, but but you know, I would love to say that. But like, there's it, this is what I mean. It's so easy to slip into this, and this is what I mean by when I say you believe heavily in limits. So like, so things will happen, and because you don't really believe it's going to work out, you'll put a half effort in, right? And then you're like, see. It, you know, ah, this didn't work out. Or when you hit something difficult, you'll just stop because you'll be like, well, I guess this is the end. When the reality is there's patterns of success around you. And if the thought process is, okay, I just need to find what I'm missing because clearly this is built to succeed and to grow and to thrive and other people have done it. Like that's another thing. If you, if you have a poverty mindset, you'll look at other people and be like, oh man, I wish I could have had it the way they did it. They're already there. They have more contacts. They, they were right place, right time. Or you flip that around, you go, well, if they could do it, I could do it. Same exact thing. Very, very different way of looking at it. And if you, like Pastor Keith says, success is hidden in templates. And that is so profound. Like, I want to go on them. Boom. Because I, like, you hear that and you're like, oh, okay. What does that mean? That means that if there's something that you want in life, there is a template out there that if you can get the template right, you can literally have anything you want in your life. And the profoundness for me in that is that, I, it really broke through for me when I started realizing that there's people out there who make a lot of money as far as like, uh, I've got one of my best friends is, is a, a commercial real estate investor. And he tells me about how these people do it. It's like, oh, we've identified this asset that we're going to, we want to get. It's worth this much. We only have to raise this much. And then we're going to take, a, we're going to take a note out on it for however long, five years. And this is how much it costs to service the debt. Let's say it costs $500,000 to service the debt. Well, we're going to raise, you know, $1.2 million. And then actually we can go into this place and it makes, you know, $450,000 a month, but because we can affect the revenue of that place and make it better, we'll actually start making $550,000 a month, which means we've now used other people's money to buy us an asset that's going up in value. And we're making money every month off of it while still paying the debt off. And when I heard that, I was like, Oh, that's incredibly logical. So all these rich people are using OPM, other people's money to get rich. What is that? That's a template. And when you have clarity in a model like that, we get this like with weight loss. It's a really good example where we all get to experience like how, what these templates look like. What if, and this is a growth mind thought process, what if you could have structures and templates like that for every area of your life so that you had absolute clarity about what you were doing? What would be impossible for you? Honestly, and that, that to me is why that's so profound. I feel like I've had this revelation of this in my own mind. Like I said, I'm not immune to poverty thinking. I've definitely, I've had a, a tough time this year as well, and I've had to counteract some of this. But this unlock recently has been massive for me. A, a great thought for you. It's, that's so good, Nick. Just seeing, like, it's seeing templates, seeing what's possible. And I've talked about this stoic thought process before of it could always be worse. Yeah. Here's what's similar to that. Think about in, you know, in an economy, in your industry, whatever you're doing, you could find someone who is smarter than you that's successful. Mm -hmm. And that could be a discouragement for you. Right. But, and you know what? If you're listening to this podcast, 99% of, 99.9% of the people listening to this podcast, you're not the smartest person in your industry. Yeah. But there's also people more successful than you that are dumber than you. Yep. And that that should be a wake-up call for you. I've met people, and I I don't mean this in an arrogant way, but I've met people, I'm like, how are you so successful? Yeah. Right. And that like that should be an encouragement to you. Like, hey, it's possible. Right. As in it could always be worse. There are people who have it worse off than you that do more than you. Right. Part of the reason that is, is people with lower intelligence, they they spend less time thinking about how bad it could be. Right. They stop limiting themselves and they're like, well, I'm not very good at much. I'll just, you know, I'll just keep driving fence posts until I figure it out. Right. Right. I'm just going to keep working till I figure it out. 
versus intelligent people are oftentimes the one who will force themselves into a poverty mindset because they can see all the potential disasters mm. versus other people like, I don't know. Well, I might as well do something. I know, I know how to do this. So I'll just keep getting after that until I become successful. Yeah. Right. So just remember as well, Nick's talking about, Hey, there's great templates. There's great opportunities. Also know there's templates out there of people who are more successful than you who are dumber than you. Yeah. So you can do it. Yeah. And what's that tell you? It tells you that's not all about intelligence. Because otherwise, not. the smartest people in the world, we, we would just be able to filter down like, hey, they have the best lives. They have the best marriages. They make the most money. They do all the things that we think are great. And that is not the case. Another thing, and I experienced this a lot, and, and I want to give this uh, just, just two more, and then I want to give you guys the, the beliefs to replace this to move into the abundance that God has for you into, into the, 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 the abundance mindset. But um, you believe in absolutes. One of the things that's so odd about a scarcity mindset, for me, I would always play in my mind back down to zero, and, and which is so stupid because like, if you don't want to be broke, why would you always practice the scenario in your head of what you would do if everything went wrong? Well, that's what I rehearsed over and over in my head. Like if I got a car... Well, even if you went back to zero, you at least know one way not to succeed. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah exactly. I would have been Thomas Edison. But like you, you, they'll look in absolutes. So they'll either like think about, think about things and, and it'll be wildly successful in their mind, the scenario they'll play out, or it'll be a cash, catastrophic failure. And so they won't move forward with the things unless they think it's a high probability that it'll work out. When in reality, the point is to actually learn. Right. I mean, most of the time you're not going to end up where you thought you were anyways. For me, I kept rehearsing. It's back been that to way zero. for us. Right. That's yeah, it has been big. And time. the impossible life. A lot of the projects we've done, like we've really shot for the moon on a lot of stuff and we haven't hit the moon. Not once. Yep. We have uh, not once in any of the events or projects that we've started. Have we hit exactly the target that we launched for? And I hope that's encouraging to a lot of you because yeah. I, I know people think like, oh, man, Garrett, Nick, everything just right. works out for them. Yeah, we, we, tr we work really hard and we set big goals and we haven't hit any of them, yep. but we've still done really well. Right. Yeah. And, that, and but what is you know what we have done? And this has been such a great example of, of this thought process. We have always learned and gone, OK, what, what did we, we miss? We realized that we, we yeah. missed something and we yeah. could have done better. Yeah. And, we, and we've leveraged that into the next goal every single time. Yeah. And we do better than the last time. And we still didn't hit our goal. We right. realized, oh, you know, we, we missed this. We, we could have done better here. Yeah. And I will tell you, like three years on and, and one year on since we officially became like a business, I feel like I have grown and learned so much. Like I think back to the, the me of June, whenever it was that we kind of became an official business of last year. And I go, man, like that guy didn't even know what he didn't know. <laughs> and, but, but like that's been some of the joy of it for even yeah. for all the other experiences that I've had. It's been there's been so much learning. And that and that really comes from that thought process of like it's not supposed to work out. It's not supposed to be easy. I'm supposed to get better. So when those things come along, having that mindset is such a game changing shift for you. And, that, and that's the, the last one I want to, to focus on kind of goes back to the parable of the, the sower, because this is a lot of people. And you said this, G, when things get tough, you're not generous. Like you, you always are thinking and this is where I, you can have a lot of money and still not be a generous person because you're, you are still poverty minded. You're thinking about like, Oh, what's this person going to think if I give this or, you know, I don't really want to do this for whatever reason it is. And if it gets hard, well now the whole thought process is I'm going to protect. Whereas you said like, if you're grow, if you're a person who like has an abundant mindset, you're rooted in God, you're going to, you're going to go, Oh, it's hard. I better start sewing. Very completely different reaction. When your hands closed, you'll never experience the but God scenarios. Mm. Um, I, th I think I want to say it's Second Kings chapter four, um, Elijah and the widow. Right. The widow who gives her last drop of oil to Elijah. Yeah, good call. Right. Yeah, Second Kings four. Yeah. Gives her last drop of oil and her last ingredients to make the bread for Elijah. Mm -hmm. And then she gets over and abundantly blessed. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't you can't experience the but God scenarios in life with your hands closed. Yeah. And and once again, like I said, this is all in order. If you know who God made you to be, right, and you know what he's called you to do, right? You're whether you're in the preparation or you're in the active duty, whatever phase that you're in, do you honestly think God's gonna just set you out and be like, Well, you know, you're not gonna have anything. We're not, I'm not gonna give you what you need to actually fulfill what I put you on earth to do, but you know, hey, tough. No, like th that's that, and that's why this goes. He's a in good order. father. He is a good father, and so that goes to that goes to like the must. We talked about what you have to replace this with, right? So limiting beliefs. You don't just 
get rid of them. You Correct. gotta replace them. Yeah, for sure. And and by you start with by wiping them off of you were built on the wrong foundation, right? Which in this case is if your source is you, if your source is your logic, whatever it is, you are always going to be in a, in stuck in that poverty place. But but the first thing is you've got to surrender, man. I, I I've shared this before, but I want to share it again because I know it's something that so many people come up against. Whatever it is, whether it's a fear you have of something irrational, a fear of something that's logical. For me, it was a, a fear of, of, of money scarcity. I remember I read the scriptures of Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And, and like he talks about how the lily was dressed better than Solomon and, and all the different things about birds. And Jesus is saying, look, these guys don't sow or reap. They don't store things away. And I take care of them. You can do all those stuff. So how much more am I going to take care of you? Then I go and read about Peter shooting his mouth off. Like, yeah, we pay the temple tax. And Jesus just goes, hey, go down and catch a fish, you know, and pull a drachma out of its mouth and pay that for the temple tax. And I have to go, do I actually believe the scriptures? Like, if I believe, like, look, I'm not, a, I'm not going to go catch a fish. Maybe I will. Who knows? But, like, I don't really fish a lot. <laughs> but but there, I can speak to so many times, whether it's been an email message or a Slack message mm -hmm. or just something, quote, unquote, random which for me is my fish catching. And I remind myself of those things because it's like, but God, like you said. So I either have to believe it, and that's the place of surrender. There's no magic. You literally have to just go, God, I trust you. And that is the whole of our faith. We're justified by what, G? By faith. And it's, here's the thing about surrender. You can't halfway surrender. Yes, yes. Right. You, you, there is only total surrender. You yeah. can't say, God, I trust you, but I'm going to you know, make sure that I got a backup plan. Yeah. Right. If the, uh, if the enemy, cause I don't know anything about surrender on the battlefield, but <laughs> if the enemy was trying to surrender to me, right. you have to make it clear? Right. You can't be like, Oh, we, you know, throw up a white flag real quick, pull it back down. Ah, we're still thinking about it. Right. So you get decimated, right? If you're going to surrender, it has to be clear. And you've got, when you're surrendering to God, you are giving up your way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You're giving up your certainty and saying, God, instead of trusting in myself, I'm going to trust in you. You cannot halfway trust in God. Yeah, that's so good. So the, the, if, the, if, you're, if you're struggling with poverty mindset, and if you're struggling with lack, if you're struggling with, ha struggling with having a growth mindset and trusting in God, it's because you have not fully surrendered yeah. to God's way of doing things and saying, you know what, God, I can't get out of this. Right, you'll surrender when you get to that place. When you realize I can't get out of it, when you say I can't get out of it, then you say, God, I, I'm going to do it your way now. Yeah. So one of the things you said, you said this recently, G, and I just thought it was so good. We, we one of the musts, you have to believe that God is good, and we all love Romans eight twenty eight that God makes uh, all things work together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. But here's the problem, G. You've talked about this. God's definition of good is not the same as ours. Yeah, that's where, you know, because Scripture says God uses all things for the good for those who love him. And if you're saying to yourself, like, man, I love God, and I'm sure experiencing a lot of not good in my life, is Scripture wrong or is your definition of good wrong? Mm. I don't think Scripture is wrong. I think your definition of good, of good is wrong. God is a very different definition of good. And like I mentioned earlier with uh, Ephesians 3, right? God, God's ways are not our ways, but also God wants to bless you. God has plans for you that are better than you could ask, think, or imagine. Mm. So if you understand that about God, like even if you've got a good idea of good, his good's better than your yes. good. But here's really the problem. Most people's definition of good has nothing to do with good. Their definition of good is comfort and ease. Mm -hmm. and, and God calls that bad for yeah. you, right? So like you're, you're, we're going in the opposite directions of God's definition of good versus ours. I, if even, like I said, even we can have a good definition of good, getting close to the right definition, God's way is superior. Yeah. But r the real problem is most people's definition of good is like, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I got what I want. My life got easier. That's not what God wants for you, mm -hmm. right? What God wants most for you is to mature you because he's developing you for something greater than you have right now. Yeah. He's developing you for something that's more important than what you're doing right now. I, I think about it this way. I was this is the, like an analogy I gave to Nick earlier talking about this, this concept, right? Like if you had a coach, um, like just in, if you played football, maybe you had a coach like I did that you did, you know, wind sprints almost every day in practice. Yeah. And just that fact alone, right? If I told you nothing else about the coach, there's no other information that you have to judge a coach on. If he makes you do wind sprints every day, some people are like, oh, that's a good coach. He's going to train. He's training his athletes, mm -hmm. right? He's going to make sure that they're well conditioned. If you don't like to do wind sprints, you're going to say, I don't like that coach. That coach stinks. Yeah. I don't want to work for him. 
right? Like I want, I want to do what I want to do, right? And so again, a lot of the times our definition of good has a lot to do with us thinking like I want it this way. Yeah. And if you've played football for a good coach, you learn mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you want. Yeah. We're going to listen to the coach. Right. If you want to do what the coach wants to do, you're not going to, you're not going to play. Yeah. And, and what's the belief there? The coach knows what you need to do to win. Yeah. And, and what's the belief? God knows what he's made us for. He knows you know who what? he's made us to be. You're not the coach. Right. He is. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and, and it's, I feel like we, in this limitation series, we keep coming back to, it, it's a matter of like what you're building your foundation on. We touched on it so heavily in the identity and I'm so glad we did because I feel like all these things, when you're, when you're bumping into limits, it's ultimately because you're doing things your own way and you're, and you're putting your own ways before God's ways. And so the very last thing for the must, so we said you got to surrender. You got to believe that God is good. Caveat, God's definition of good is not your definition of good. And then the last thing is, is you got to believe and know that God made you to grow. Like you're not meant to maintain. You're not meant for a life of comfort and ease. Truly, you are meant to grow. And so all these things that come your way, if you like, you, there's those famous quotes that like, if you want to make, if you want to make your son tough, you wouldn't give him a life of comfort. Well, and ease. it's like if I was training you at the gym. Right. And right. Like you're starting to. I remember, you know, I, I put some big weight on the bar for you not that long ago. Yeah. Right. That you'd never really benched that much weight before. And I was Correct. like, Nick, I've, I know how strong you are. You can actually do more weight than you think. Let's put some, put, yeah. let's put some weight on the bar. Right. But then we started training with you and I saw you get stronger and I put more weight on the bar and you started crying about it. <laughs> Did I? No, I'm, I'm oh, giving oh, a right. hypothetical. Like, it w- it would be as if you started <laughs> crying about it when I start adding weight to the bar. Right. That sounds foolish. It does. Right. Because it's foolish to you because you want to be stronger. Right. But if you don't want to be stronger, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Why is it getting harder? Yeah. Right. It's because you're growing. Yeah. And I was just encouraging one of my friends with this uh, recently that uh, he's going through a tough season right now. He's going through some some real scarcity and he's working on having the right mindset about it. And I was telling him, you know, I, I went through a season just like what he's going through when he was getting, st- he's just getting started in one of his businesses. I said, I remember going through a season like you were in, and this is where I had to encourage myself, have to remind yes. myself what God says that I can, I, this won't, my situation might not change, but I'm going to change yeah. and get stronger. Yes. And I, I told him, I said, you're going to have the same moment that I had a couple of years from now. You're going to look back at this and you'll go through another season like you're in right now. And you will realize how different you are. Hmm. You'll face the same situation you faced before. Just like with, it's, yeah. it's like with Nick. It's like, yep. you know, I put 225 on the bar right now, might feel heavy, yeah. right? But we get stronger and we, we, and then I bring you back to 225. You're like, man, this feels so easy. Yeah. What changed? The weight didn't change. You change. Yeah. And so this is understanding God made me to grow and, and a, a part with this to grow. That means you've got to do you part, your part. God's going to do his part. You got to do your part, which is so I got to make investments, right? And I don't just mean mm-hmm. financial investments yeah. everywhere I go in my life. I got to, sow. I got to pour into things. This yes. is me giving a, like when I put a seed in the ground, I can't make a seed grow. I can, I can put the right seed in the right ground and water it, but I can't just speak to this seed and make it grow. God can, yeah. right? He made the seed. The seed is lines up with his order, with his way of doing things. And so I'm going to do my part. And then I'm going to trust yes. the really difficult part of this tiny little, you know, hard grain thing turning into an abundant resource that I can u- that I can use, that can feed me, that I can sell. God's going to do all that special part. I just got to be faithful with the part that I can do. Normally, I wrap us up, Nick. But uh, I, like you said, we've been coming back to a lot of the same things in this series. And I think this series really encapsulates uh, a revelation that God's given you, which is God's ways are better. Mm-hmm. So I want you to wrap us up today. Yeah, I was I, I was going to share. That. I, I hope if you're listening out there and you're going through difficult things, um, that you're that you realize if you feel like you want to quit, if you're sitting there going like this must be the end, if you're sat there and you're thinking like, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Good, like that. That is good. That's God's definition of good because you're growing you're changing, you're becoming stronger, you're maturing. That is literally the whole point. Because here's the thing, if you decide to pack it in on those ones and you quit right there, I promise you, you're going to bump into that same exact scenario somewhere. You have to learn the lesson at some point. Why? Because God's got great things ahead of you. He's made you as a son or daughter. He's got a purpose for your life. And it, there's no magic. There's no magic formula here. It comes down to surrender. You either believe what God said about you, you believe what he's put in your word, or you don't. And if you need a little encouragement, 
ask yourself how it's worked out when you've done your own ways. Because I had a very transformational moment for, in my own life uh, roughly four years ago when the words I audibly heard, it was like somebody yelled them in my ear. It was the loudest thought I've ever had in my life. It was my ways are better. And you know what? That was God speaking to me. And I knew one thing uh, before that. My ways weren't working. I didn't need anybody to convince me of that. So if you need some belief, ask yourself, how have your ways worked for you? And if the answer is they're not working out, go all in, man. Go all in for God. Trust in him. Put your belief in him. Surrender your ways. And I promise you who you are in one year, it will be entirely different. And truly, that's when you start to do the impossible and you grow into who God made you. So I hope everybody's seen the limitation of mindset and where poverty has absolutely robbed you. And I hope that you can listen to this, surrender to God, and move into abundance where he wants you to be. 